J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit was published in 1937 as a children's book, which would eventually bloom into the trilogy The Lord of the Rings, which was published in 1955. Tolkien's creation of Middle-earth, with its languages, mythical races, and quest of epic proportion, would capture the hearts of readers all over. This fan base was even further increased by Peter Jackson's live-action film adaptation's first release in 2001. Out of the love for Tolkien's mythical world, the immense fandom of The Lord of the Rings has created a number of ways to further enjoy Middle-earth apart from the books or film adaptations. For instance, one of the many portals that fans use are games, be the Middle-earth themed board games, RPG video games, or massive multiplayer online games like Lord of the Rings Online. But if gaming isn't a fan's flavor of pipe weed, they can take other routes to participation, like fan sites. One of the largest Lord of the Rings themed fan sites is the OneRing.net, or Torn for short. Within Torn, fans can read articles about Lord of the Rings related news, share fan videos, fan produced poetry, communicate with others via live chat, or show off their fan fiction. Because of the enormity of Tolkien's Middle Earth, fans have a wide array of material to work with and write about. Some fans write fiction about what characters' childhoods might have looked like, or take minor characters and talk about what they did after the ring was destroyed. Fans who are more well read in the lore and history of Middle Earth can comment on others' fictions and correct details that stray from historical facts that Tolkien actually wrote. This dispersed expertise makes for engaging comments and discussions as fans interact via forums or comment threads and educate each other on facts surrounding Middle Earth. Much like Tolkien's world, his fandom is incredibly diverse, so any lover of Middle Earth can find their niche to gain influence in this affinity group. For instance, some fans who were talented in filmmaking produced short films that were very well received by the massive audience of mutual fans that Torn includes. Not only is Torn a place for Lord of the Rings fans to collectively grow in their knowledge of Tolkien's works, it also encourages fans to become not only consumers of literacy, but producers of literacy as well as they engage in writing, create art, and make films. It is remarkable to see how Tolkien's work has generated a massive, ever-growing affinity space for fans to participate and engage their literacies in various ways. As proposed by Guy and Kerwood, taking these principles of the affinity space into the classroom could make for a more engaging space for learning. So how do we take these principles that we've learned from the Lord of the Rings and the One Ring .net into the classroom? First, let's consider how the traditional classroom actually teaches. In the traditional classroom, students are taught an extensive amount of knowledge and their progress is assessed by tests or papers. The only recipient of their tests or papers is the teacher, and the students rarely have to respond to the assessment or criticism and correct or improve their work. Everything is done with the main objective of getting a high grade, showing that this model is more concerned with the finished product rather than the process of learning. Let's contrast that with how people learn on Torn. If a Lord of the Rings fan wants to contribute a piece of fan fiction, they have to do their research. They have to understand the world of Middle-earth, the characters they will interact with, the setting, the time period, etc. Think of the increased level of critical thinking that occurs in fan fiction compared to a five paragraph essay on the theme of a novel read in class. Writing fan fiction requires both extensive knowledge and an intensive understanding about the subject. Basically a Sparknotes level of understanding won't cut it. No one gets to cheat in fan fiction. In regard to assessment, there is a broader audience instead of just one teacher being the greater. And if the author made big mistakes in their understanding of the text, others can help correct them by pointing them back to the book and explain why it's wrong. The distributed knowledge of the audience gives feedback to assess the author's work. Then the writer will go back and correct themselves. They will do more research on the characters or setting so that they won't make the same mistakes next time. All the while, their understanding of the story is increasing and they continue to learn. A side note here is that other fans who aren't as gifted at writing show their understanding of Lord of the Rings by other modes like artwork, video, poetry, etc. But they receive the same type of assessment and go through the same type of learning. Now how do we transfer that type of learning and assessment into the classroom? Obviously the fans of the Lord of the Rings are self-motivated to do their work because they love the books. However, the structure of the OneRing.net could be adapted to a classroom and I think students would really benefit from it. Imagine if a high school English teacher created a type of fan site for the works of literature that the class was exploring. If it was used like the OneRing.net is, it could accomplish a number of things. The students of various skills would have multiple modes in which they could express their understanding of a text. Also, while written essays are necessary and can be challenging, fan fiction, fan art, and fan film also require a high level of understanding and critical thinking, and perhaps even more in some cases. 
Having students try these modes of literacy would further challenge and benefit students if added to a class curriculum. Next, having students give feedback to each other's work has two benefits. First off, it is another way to show that they understand the subject themselves, because if a student can grade a work, they probably understand it. Secondly, the increased audience will hopefully encourage students to work harder to show off their skills and understanding. Next, having students respond to feedback will teach them how to appropriately give, receive, and respond to criticism. Lastly, all of this work online makes legitimate use of the internet and technology, helping the students become digitally literate. So not only does this accomplish personal teaching goals, like equipping students to be dexterously literate, it also fulfills a number of common core requirements, like using technology, including the internet, or writing products in response to ongoing feedback, or writing for a range of tasks, purposes, and audiences. Because the use of online affinity spaces encourages creativity, it isn't outrageous to think that using some of the elements of fan sites like the OneRing.net might motivate students to engage with learning in unique new ways. Of course, this idea faces challenges, but since it has potential for so many positive outcomes, it would at least be a worthwhile attempt. After all, risks are often worth it. I mean, what if Frodo hadn't been willing to face the risks in taking the ring to Mount Doom? The fate of our students depends on this. I bid you stand, teachers for literacy.